Fei Xiao are newest hunt characters here, and she happens to be one of the most fun characters that I've played with in this game. In this video, we're going to go through a bunch of stuff about her kit, teams, strength, and talking about whether you should pull for her. So if there's a specific part you're here for, I've timestamped the video, so feel free to skip through. We're going to start with going over how her kit works, but I do need to include a quick disclaimer. I'm recording this video before she comes out, so all the information specifically regarding her multipliers is from content created by other creators using the experience server, which means it is subject to change. If something big does happen to change, I'll leave it in a pinned comment, but hopefully it'll just be small number changes. Her basic attack we can kind of ignore, it's just a stock standard basic attack and you should generally try not to use it. The main damage from Fei Xiao's kit comes from her ultimate and talent. Fei Xiao's ultimate is a lot like Acheron's, it doesn't require energy, but unlike relying on debuffs from teammates, Fei Xiao just relies on ally attacks. For every two attacks by ally targets, including herself, she gains gains one stack towards her ultimate. You can see the progress of this next to her icon at the bottom of the screen. For every attack an ally does, half of that circle will fill. Once the circle is fully filled, then she'll gain one stack towards her ultimate. Her ultimate can be used once you have six stacks, but like Yun Li, you can overcap this all the way up to 12 stacks. This is all listed under her talent. The rest of her talent is about her follow-up attack. When a teammate attacks an enemy, Fei Xiao will immediately launch a follow-up attack against the primary target because it is a single target attack, dealing pretty good wind damage. This effect can only trigger once per turn, but it also buffs her by giving her 60% damage for two turns. Because of how frequent Fei Xiao's follow-ups are, this will pretty much be a permanent buff once you've started the fight. Now going back to Fei Xiao's ultimate. Once you use it, you choose an enemy to target because it is a single target ability, and then it works a lot like Akron's ult, except you have two different attacks you can use. Both these attacks are identical, except one does bonus damage against weakness broken targets, and the other does bonus damage against non-weakness broken targets. Now Harry of us know we're all brain dead gacha players, so they made it really easy to know which one to use. If you look at the actual icons, one of them is always going to be highlighted, that's the one that's going to be doing more damage. If you don't want to even think about that, on PC you can just mash spacebar and it's always going to use the correct attack. Or you can even just turn on autoplay and autoplay will always use the correct attack. While Fei Xiao is doing these attacks, she also increases her weakness break efficiency and it also ignores element weakness type just like Akron's ult again. Now going back to her skill, it's super straightforward, it's a single target ability that has an initial hit but it also immediately launches one instance of her follow-up attack from her talent. Her technique is actually very useful. After you enter battle, Fei Xiao is going to do wind damage to all enemies at the start of each wave and this damage is guaranteed to crit. This technique also pulls enemies around her into her and you can do some really funny stuff like this. Now for every enemy that is actually pulled into a technique, that wind damage attack that she does at the start of each wave, the multiplier actually increases. So just like how Akron's ult can kind of wipe through waves in Sim Universe or Overworld, Fei Xiao can do a similar thing if you just group a ton of enemies around her. Her major traces are pretty simple. When the battle starts, she gains three stacks towards her ultimate, and if at the start of a turn no follow-ups were launched by her talent in the previous turn, it counts as one towards the number of attacks required for an ultimate. Alt stack. So she doesn't just gain an alt stack flat out, she gains half of one. And the entire point of this is if you play her in a team where teammates aren't attacking that much, so maybe with supports like Sparkle, Bronya, or like Robin, then she still does gain some stacks by herself. Now her A4 trace states that her ultimate damage is also considered as follow-up damage, which is really important when we start looking at what relics to put on her. This trace also just gives her 36% crit damage for all her follow-up attacks, which now includes her ultimate. And then finally her A6 trace, when she uses her skill, she increases her attack by 48%, lasting for three turns. Once again, like the buff from her talent, this is basically permanent. For her relics, the stats at least, it's very straightforward because she is just a generic crit DPS. For your body, you're going to want crit rate or crit damage. For your boots, you can run speed or attack percent depending on whether you prefer higher frequency of attacks or just bigger damage when you do actually attack. Fei Xiao is a very fast character sitting at 112 base speed, so you can easily hit 134 with speed buffs from teammates plus some substats, but overall I still had a lot more success using speed boots when I was testing her out, but I do know 
know a lot of players really prefer attack boots on their DPS units, so at the end of the day, it's up to you. For your orb, you're going to want damage percent, but attack percent is a fine alternative, and then the rope is going to be attack percent. For the actual relic set, you're going to have a few great options. The best one is going to be the Wind Soaring Valorous set, but you can run the Ash Blazing Grand Duke, and they're going to be pretty similar. Other than that, two piece, two piece will be her next best option. And you could consider the Quantum set, especially if you're fighting against Quantum Weak enemies. For Planner Ornament set, you're going to go with Duran, as it just gives her the most amount of stats since it's really easy for her to activate its set bonus. The next best options are going to be Ismo, which is perfectly fine as well if you are playing dual DPS, which you will be doing quite often, and we'll talk about her teams in a little bit, but also Sal Soto is a good option if you farmed that before. In terms of light cones, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Her signature is going to be her best in slot as expected. It gives a lot of stats that she really wants, and it is a great option if you're looking to invest. If you do have Dr. Ratio signature, it's going to be a really strong option. The part of the passive that gives crit damage based on debuffs is going to be a little inconsistent, but the rest of the light cones passive is amazing for what Fei Shout does. Other than that, you have Topaz's weapon, which is a decent option, but it's not too far off the free to play options, which are going to be sword play as well as cruising in the stellar sea. In terms of teams, Fei Shao is a pretty interesting character. She has two ways to play. One is in a dual DPS setup and the other is going to be as a hyper carry. In terms of dual DPS partners, her best ones are going to be Topaz, March 7th Hunt version, as well as Moza. Topaz is going to be the best option because she provides a lot to the team. And if you have her, I would highly recommend using her with Fei Xiao. She's going to be doing a lot of damage in this team because Fei Xiao's constant follow-ups will be advancing Numbi as well as her own attacks will generate stacks for Fei Xiao's ultimate. If you don't have Topaz though, March 7th and Moza are great options. Personally, I found more success with March 7th, but the Moza I was testing with was pretty low investment and I didn't get to test him that much. At the end of the day, choosing between the two if you're free to play depends on your investment in each of them. I do think especially at the higher Eidolons, Moza is going to be a bit stronger and even more so against Lightning Week, but March will still have great uses against Imaginary and Wind Week. Now in terms of the support slot in this team, you're going to want a dual DPS buffer. And for those, we have Haran May, Robin, or Asta. Robin is pretty easily going to be the strongest option here. She synergizes perfectly with the team as she is working with a lot of follow-up attacks, which means she's not only getting the most out of her buffs, but she can also output a lot of her own damage. Ranme is still going to be a fine alternative, just not as good as Robin, and Asta is actually surprisingly good considering she is a 4-star. So for some context, I tried a team, a fully free-to-play team, with March 7th, Asta, and Galaga, and I was able to two-cycle the first half of the current MOC. You can also consider debuffers as they do technically amplify damage for both DPSs. So we have Jiao Chu, who was just on Banner, Pella, and Silverwolf. Personally, I would still prefer using Asta or Ranme over a Nihility, but you can try and see if it works for you. For sustains, the best option is going to be Aventurine. Aventurine's follow-ups are going to really help in funneling Fei Xiao's ult, but he also is going to double dip and take advantage of the buffs on the team and do his own great damage. For our other sustains, they're all perfectly good options. Fushran is providing crit to the team, which is always a decent buff. While Hawhaw's energy buff doesn't do anything for Fei Xiao, it is very useful if you are using her with Robin, and obviously the attack buff is nice as well. For our four star options, Galaga is going to be the best simply because he attacks quite often, which helps stack Fei Xiao's ult, but you can use any of the other guys as long as they can keep your team alive. So, generally, for a dual DPS team, which I do think are her best teams, you're looking at putting Fei Xiao, a sub DPS, a team wide buffer, and a sustain unit with the premium options being Topaz, Robin, Aventurine. Now going back to Hyper Carry, Hyper Carry isn't ideal for Fei Xiao, but it technically does work. You're going to want to run two supports now and you have a lot of options to choose from. Ideally, you do want advanced forward, so Bronya and Sparkle are going to be great options. Robin is also still going to be very good. If you're looking at free-to-play options, a new character pops up, which is Hanya. Now, since Fei Xiao doesn't actually need energy, Ting Yun is out of the picture. And since she wants high-frequency attacks, not only from her teammates, but also by herself, this speed buff from Hanya is actually very useful. For hyper carry teams, I don't think there's a consensus for a best team, like there is for a sub-DPS one, so generally just mess around with 
dual support setups and see which one works best for you. But you do need to make sure you're including an advanced four character or some speed buffs. Now let's talk about how strong Fei Xiao actually is. And it should come to no surprise to anyone that she is a really strong character. Her premium team is easily able to destroy MOC as well as Apocalyptic Shadow since they are relatively favorable for hunt characters. While testing around with her, I was easily able to zero cycle the first half of MOC with her premium team. And in the second half, it was a two cycle clear at best, but that is the Aventurine boss fight, which is a bit tough. In Apocalyptic Shadow, I was able to finish with 1750 action value remaining, which is pretty impressive. Now her free to play teams actually impressed me quite a lot. Using March instead of Topaz, which to be fair is still a five star heavy team, but is a bit more free to play friendly, I was still easily able to zero cycle the first half of MOC. And as I mentioned earlier, with a March, Gallagher and Asta setup, I was comfortably able to get a two cycle clear on the first half of the current MOC which is very impressive for a very free to play friendly team. In pure fiction, things get a little tough. As a hunt character, she's not really favored there and we don't really expect Fei Xiao to do well in pure fiction, but for a hunt character, she can actually perform quite well. Similar to how Topaz was reasonably good in previous pure fictions that had a lot of elite enemies and fire weakness, Fei Xiao has a lot of potential in pure fictions that have a lot of elite enemies and I don't think she really cares at what weakness they are. These teams will probably be with her paired with her erudition character. So the erudition character cleans out the waves while she mainly focuses on the boss and the elite enemies. While trying something like this in the current pure fiction, I did manage to get a 40k clear. Herda did most of the work, but Feishao did most of the damage to the elite enemies and the boss at the end to the point where Kafka was stuck at 1% health for a lot of the fight until Herda could clear out all the waves. If a few Future Pure Fiction has a buff that benefits follow-up attacks and converts them to AoE damage similar to how the Shatter effect works. Fei Xiao as a carry does have some potential in Pure Fiction, but the expectation isn't really for a hunt character to clear Pure Fiction for us. Well, let's move on to should you pull her? Well, like I said, she is a very strong character, but Fei Xiao is a DPS character at heart and DPSs generally don't have as much value as support units. And a really good support unit just happens to be on the banner, which is Robin. So in terms of value, if you are happy with the DPS units you have on your account currently, I would still probably suggest pulling Robin. But if you want a DPS unit who can help you carry you through content, or you really like the way she plays, how she looks or her character, I guarantee you will be happy with what you get. For those wondering whether if she's still worth it without Robin, I would say yes, she's still very good and easily a top tier DPS, but she's not going to reach that huge potential that you might be hoping for. So if you do get Fei Xiao, I would try and spend your jades on Robin and try and get a copy of her, but definitely don't feel too pressured to go for her if you don't have enough jades or you just don't want her, because Fei Xiao can still pretty easily clear content without her. And like I said at the very start of the video, she is a really fun character to play, so that is something you might want to keep in mind. They basically combine two of the most fun mechanics they have created, which is mass follow-up attacks as well as Akron ult. This could be recency bias though, so we'll see if it lasts. 